So I'm putting this valve in specifically on the discharge of this charge controller. The solar panel wires come in through the wall here into it. It determines whether the power should go to the batteries directly or go to the inverter. So it's controlling the charge. It's a fairly inexpensive unit, but it has worked well. It's about five years old. I'll leave a link to the review I did of it back then. It's worked well for me, but the problem is it has a programming problem. That's what I was told back five years ago when I complained about it. And I'll show that video, a link to that video also. But what it does, it shuts off. This this is showing you the power coming from the solar panels and the, the, ba the power in the batteries. It's showing the batteries are 100% charged and 12.6 volts. But after about 20 seconds, it shuts off for two seconds. You'll see it's up. It's going up to 13 volts here. But then that shuts off and causes the voltage to drop down to 12.6, 12.5, and even lower sometimes. And then it starts to come back up. So it's robbing the inverter of some power. So what I what I learned was that I used to just disconnect it from the battery that it goes into just disconnect and then reconnect it and that would reset it and then it stop doing that but these solar batteries the bolt has to be screwed down into the the battery so to take this off is a major job that's why i'm going to put a valve a shut off valve in here then i'll just shut it off and then turn it back on and that should reset the charge controller I'm going to start by disconnecting the charge controller from the batteries. I don't want to get shocked. I need to disconnect this wire here going down to the input of the batteries. It takes a Phillips screwdriver. These wires are almost too large for this charge controller. I literally have to trim the ends a little bit. There's my wire. So I need to cut a piece. I'm going to put the switch over here on this panel. My new switch, I'll give you details on it, uh, appears that it is oriented this way pointing down towards the battery and to turn the wire on you 
go this way to the on position and then it's got knockouts on the sides and these huge nuts that the wire will wrap around so I think I'm going to knock out the side come into it from the side See if I can just break it off with these pliers. I obtained this switch from Lot Fancy. And they're located lotfancy.inc, L O T F A N C Y dot I N C. And they're located in Walnut, California. But you can go to this link and click on for more information but this is considered a battery switch and it's 6 volt 12 volt 24 volt 48 or 60 volt uh, battery disconnect master cutoff switch for marine boat rv atv utv vehicles it's waterproof it's heavy duty isolator switch 275 to 1250 amps in an on-off position. Bought it for $16.19 and the shipping was free. As I probably said before, that's why I like going to a Walmart uh, opposed to Amazon because generally unless you're a special member, uh, whatever it's called, I forget because I'm not one of them, you have to pay shipping unless it's at least $25 I think whereas with Walmart commonly it's free and this is good view of the unit itself and basically I connected the wires to these large studs on the underside and these these things that look like knockouts on the side they actually pull out so you pull out the ones that you want the wires to go through and then just bend your wire around and of course you loosen the nut then bend your wire around and then tighten it down and you want your bend going in the direction clockwise so it'll tighten as you tighten the nut I went ahead and installed the switch uh, and didn't record it because it was just a little too complicated to try to record but basically I cut this wire here it goes down to the input side of the two solar batteries and I cut it with a hacksaw you may be able to do it with something else but it's pretty good size diameter um, so so I cut it with a hacksaw and then just used an exacto blade to trim the links to probably about two inches long and then just simply took these these look out like knockouts but they're really not and they just slide in into these so you just it's just a matter of so it's just a matter of sliding this out and then this was open and I was able to put the wire in around this large post which I'll show you a picture of and I, of course I did it on the bottom also And I just um, I just bolted it to my pegboard here, which was convenient. And has nuts. That's one thing about this. Uh, didn't wasn't too crazy about the ways that you can attach it to things. 
you can't put it into the wall per se. Um, I suppose if there's some kind of a plastic insert you could drill into the wall first and maybe you could do it that way, I don't know. But it just happened that it worked on my pegboard. So that's the way I put it on. And now I'll show you how it works you know, under a real situation where the charge controller needed to be reset. Okay, I have my switch installed, which I showed you. It allows me to shut off power from the battery to the charge controller. Well, the charge controller is doing the problem that I discussed earlier. It um, charges for approximately 20 seconds and then it shuts off. And you can tell that by looking at this monitor here. It's shut off now. And the incoming volts will go up. But then after 20 some seconds, the charge controller will shut off for just two seconds, but that's enough to cause the voltage to drop considerably. So this is a problem with this charge controller from day one, and it would have required a programming expense to correct it, which I didn't want to pay. Uh, there it goes off again. So I just normally disconnect it from the batteries, but that's tedious and shouldn't have to be done. So I'm going to try shutting off the power. Turn this switch down. Okay, now the power is off to the controller. And we have almost 70 volts coming in from the panels. And see now it's being consistent because it's not being interrupted. So let's turn the power to the controller back on. Okay, you heard it coming on. And I'll put this on where I can see how much charge there is to the battery. Okay, now the voltage coming in has reduced to the upper 50s. And the voltage going into the house is 13 volts. And the charge controller now is not shutting off every 20 some seconds, which is allowing the voltage going into the house to stay up. So this is working. So having this switch has definitely saved me a lot of work. And this is not a problem that occurs like every other day. Sometimes it's weeks at a time before I have the problem. So, that helps.